So I've had a massive day on the sander, on the 40 grit. I'm, uh, I'm still shaking, but uh, I've given it a huge sand down, taking most of the uh, most of the epoxy off. <clears throat> now with the 40, it's 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 good. It gets it down quick, but it also leaves a lot of deep scratches in it. So you got you don't want to go down to finish level. You want to get pretty close to it and then stop, and then you want to start coming down or up the sandpaper grit. So heading to an 80 grit, giving it a, giving it a big sand again on the 80, big sand again on the 120. 240 and just work your way so um pretty happy with it got a lot of the lumps and bumps out so it's uh looking a lot better um also on this connection here i've routed out a little bit here just so when we do pour the epoxy through the middle it will actually flow the whole way through and you'll be left with some little bitty bit there so it's going to come all the way through and then stop here at this join but, um, yeah, pretty happy with it. So now the plan is, I need to, I don't want to do any more sanding until I've finished um, all the epoxy. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to seal up all the edges uh, in the middle, the two edge pieces. So I'm going to seal that up with epoxy and then get ready and start prepping up to get it into a, um, into a box form so I can pour that whole middle section. But um, yeah, it's looking sweet, pretty happy. So what I'm doing here is a bit of a cheat. Um, I don't have a massive piece of uh, melamine or, or something, something really big that can take the whole thing. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using a small piece of ply. I've got it taped up so it doesn't stick. And I'm just putting silicon around where the, um, the extent of the epoxy is gonna go. So this is the underside here. And then what I'm doing is getting that piece of board, sticking it down, weighing it down so it's nice and tight and airtight and then I'm shooting a few nails in and that is going to hold it, it should do fine um, and then when I flip it back over now and pour the epoxy it, uh, it'll all just fill up this inner inner section it won't bridge this, if it does i got a double layer on if it does we should be right um, it's just a it's an easy way of doing it I think but if you take the pour slow, if you try, if I tried to do the whole thing in one I wouldn't risk it this way, I would have a, bit, a bed on it but um, you can see an example here of where it worked last time. This is what I did on the other side. So basically, nice ring of silicon. Then I had a board on it and it just fills up the little ring on the bottom and that's it. All right, that's the plan. All right, we're ready to move on to the final stage here now. So what I've done is I've filled everything up to about an inch, maybe, whatever that is, um, from the final surface. And I have just used clear, because the idea is they want to be put uh, LED lights, strip lights underneath this, and then we're gonna have um, a green pigment <clears throat> on the top. So I didn't want to use green the whole way through in case it, the light wouldn't penetrate as much. So what I've done is I've used clear, so that should allow the light to get up through it a bit more and you should get a more vibrant finish on the top. And um, pretty happy with everything. There's a couple of bubbles in there, but I mean, it's all it's all good, it's all covered. I got the top perfect. But um, yeah, so this end is all good and perfect. And it's a nice finish on the join. The other end up here I wasn't delighted with. So what I've done is we have to come in through with this river here because it it really falls off so that's going to be all epoxy in there and then what I did was this wasn't great because there's a few cracks in here so what I've done is I've just notched out a little bit so it should look should look pretty good so the river is just going to come the whole way through and go through to the end of the timber which is going to be pretty much what it's going to look like through the center here so yeah I'm happy with that all right so the plan now is going to mix up the green green epoxy and uh, Get that in, pour it up to final level, and uh, get it finished. Now 
Another way to kind of minimize them um, loss of epoxy and over pouring and creating a big mess is to put a bit of a dam around it. So I've gone around with silicon and I've put a dam the whole way around where I'm going to be pouring. This is, I really do need this in the middle here because I, I do want the epoxy to get right up into these gaps. Um, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to pour from, from this end here and that end down there and I'm going to hope it flows through. But in order to get that pressure, I need to, the kind of the, the, the static head pressure, I need to pour, over pour in each end and that will then push it up in the middle. Worst case, I can just pour straight into there, but you're going to be introducing trapping air in there, which isn't great. So my plan is to pour from, pour from this end first, with it lifted up slightly so it all flows that way. And then I'm going to drop this side down and as it's coming back, I'm going to fill again here. Uh, let's see if it works. So for this mix, I'm going, it's five to one, so I'm going 250 grams for the final mix, um, which is going to be 50 grams of the hardener mixed into it. I've gone really careful pouring it in to try and get as little air bubbles in there as possible. Um, and I'm going to stir it super slow, take my time, and just really try my best to get as little air in as possible, so it's going to help me out later on. All right. And there's 50 grams of the hardener poured in. You can see, very little air. So mix this up until all that hardener is fully mixed in before you add any powder. So get everything done so you can see it. You can see how it's looking. Make sure it's all mixed properly and then add in the, um, the powder. So you can see, still very cloudy, super slow. Take it easy. Don't introduce any air. Once it's all clear, then we get the black damn and green envy in there. Mm -hmm. So keep mixing, takes a few minutes, but you got time. It's slow hard now, it'll be right. So you see why it's still got that weird stuff in it. It's not, um, it's not mixed, it's not even, but it's getting there. Let's go down. All right, I'll stop recording so I can actually do it. Okay, that's pretty good. So the best, the most important thing to do is make sure you scrape the sides, get right off the sides because one of the, the, the epoxy or the hardener is gonna be stuck against that. So you need to really make sure that's mixed up. So that's a lot clearer, a lot better. So I'm gonna get the powder in there. That's the first one. I'm going to mix up another one now. Come from the other side. All right, we're all poured. My dam is working well. So, see, basically I've overfilled everything just slightly to get it over the line. I'm gonna give it a few minutes now to settle down. The only issue or bit I have to watch is a bit of air trapped at the end maybe, but uh, just here in the center, which I knew would happen. It's, um, I'm filling from both ends and that's just got a little bit of trapped air in it. So I'm just gonna have to keep popping some bubbles there and that should be sweet. But um, yeah, I'm gonna take it quite slow. There's about another oh, what, 600 mil went into this. So it's gone well. Just gotta watch it like a hawk now and make sure I get every bubble out of it. Okay, very happy with it. So we still have lots of these little air bubbles. 
So that's just from the pour itself. There's nothing much coming up, which is good. So now before it starts going off and getting too excited, I'm going to hit it with the flame and uh, try and get a lot of that surface stuff off in one crack. So let's do it. Very hard to record and do it, so I'll do what I can. Nice and quick. Hopefully that wasn't too shaky, but you can imagine that's very hard to do. Anyway, I've got some proper camera gear coming soon. But it looks really, looking really good now. It's got some nice pattern to it. So what I'm gonna do is let it sit for another while, keep an eye on it, and I'm gonna give it a little swirl before it starts to set, and then that swirl will kind of mellow down. If you look at if you look at this table here, it's got a pretty intense swirl. So this was right before it was going, I'd give it that swirl. I don't want to go that thick on it. I want to go more like this, so it's like a frosty kind of, yeah, not as defined. So that's what we're aiming for.